translating science to the community. Let's see what we have here. It's important to fit the language into the community instead of expect the community to fit their language. So you should be able to communicate whatever you need in a language they understand. And I'm not just talking about like Spanish, French, German. I'm talking about you know, different whatever languages. That, however, that needs to be conveyed. Um, so when you talked about um, the different modalities that working with like. If you want to get a certain community, you might have to use the TV, um, radio, and it's important that you know what radio stations they might use, um, different apps. Oh, yeah, so honesty. It's important um, to be honest with the people in the communities that you're serving, and sometimes that's a bit, I guess this is bearish too, so. Yeah, I guess honestly address bears is what it says. And that's side effects, stigma, um, financial. And sometimes that is, so we're talking about translating the science of it. For instance, the science might be like, hey, you know, you have to take this, this, this you know, you have to have X, this, this how do you know, this has to be in your blood, excellent, you know, a certain level, a certain level maybe, maybe the scientific term, but sometimes that would just be to me like, you need to take this pill every day. If you miss a day, this is what happens. If you miss two days, this is what happens, kind of basically. And I think somebody had earlier mentioned the concept, the whole idea of birth control and how a lot of people don't understand exactly how that works. They just know they have to take it. Um, yeah, so sometimes it's important to remember that you, whatever, you, you are going to, there's a go-between. So you're tra talking to somebody who's going to talk to somebody else, basically. And that might be the parent, that might be the partner. And so you're translating this information in a way to somebody, not only so they understand it, but they need to be able to go and tell somebody else. Um, that often these conversations are, there's a go-between. Um, yeah, know the client, not so science, not universal. Yeah, so how prep works, um, I think one of the things we talked about is this whole concept of that prep is in many ways people see it, you know, the way you hear, you hear Google or Xerox, you know, like, oh, prep is the actual drug. And so even with this conversation about what prep is and how you know, HIV management, all this to be for prevention, you have to kind of step back and talk about even the, not, the evolution, you know, how we got here, basically. I think that is my Oh, somebody said, you know, kind of like, you know, what would you, you ask them, what would you want to know? Would you be interested in knowing other risk factors? Like, what are you interested in? Don't bombard them with a ton of information. What do you need to know, basically, instead of this all encompassing stuff? All right. So, barriers. So, one of the barriers is the idea that everybody on PEP is just really sexually active and promiscuous, and you know, the whole concept of slut shaming, and that, you know, yeah, that's only for people who are having lots and lots of sex and therefore may not be at risk um, for HIV and AIDS, but certainly have all these other diseases, basically. Like if you're having crap, you mean you have all these other sexual attractions and diseases. Um, the burden of medical involvement, having to go, having to come back often every three months for the testing. Um, you know, people, if the site's not my way to work, if they have to take off time for work. Um, we talked a fair amount about rural communities. One of the barriers in rural communities, it's not just access, but everything's so small. So for instance, let's say you even had a provider, your prescription, you know, it's likely that the pharmacist might go to church with your parents, you know, so, or you go to school. Um, lack of competent providers, people mentioned that sometimes providers didn't exactly know what it was and how all that was going on. Once again, we talked about languages that if you, you, know, you want to translate into multiple languages, um, of the people you're serving. Um, yeah, so one of the barriers is a lot of these groups, there's often, a, a, people think that these other communities are not actually doing the work and sometimes they have limited funds and so sometimes if you're a bigger organization or a state organization, sometimes when you want to partner with these people and you can actually give them funding or route funding through them. So one of the barriers is, you know, there's that barrier to resource and we know that that often impacts, you know, communities of color um, and other marginalized communities. Understanding, lack of understanding about what, what is HIV, what is STDs, STIs, all that, you know, what is, you know, going on basically. And 
that call, that whole conversation. Oh, that one when it comes to marketing, one size doesn't fit all the resources um, that people, you know, see often. So if you walk into a clinic and you see posters from prep or whatever, um, the first people, the first thing that people notice about those posters is, "Am I in that?" You know, are they all white people? Or, you know, this. And I think people have mentioned here, here, even within the gay community or men, there's men. You know, if you're a large person, you just see, you know, these Abercrombie and Fitch models, it's important to show, you know, if you're talking about people having sex, a lot of people have sex, and so you want to show that. So the barrier is sometimes, the barrier is like, you're welcome here, because the sign says they're welcome here, but the barrier once you get in there is like, clearly they're not thinking of me. Substance and mental health issues, and how they play into that, um, and how some people may or may want to be addressed. So one of the barrier is, if PrEP, is tied to like being clean and sober, or if prep is tied to you having to see a therapist, um, that might be problematic for some people. So some people certainly might want those benefits, but to tie it to that, to tie this, um, you know, is problematic for a lot of people. Come on, slut shaming again. Lots of. So it's a present What does this say? A representation of communities. Oh yeah, so this is the last one. So we kind of flipped this on our head, I think. We kind of talked about the whole conversation of when you're talking about like, who's missing at the table, inviting them. Um, the question often I ask is, um, first of all, don't assume that just because you don't know them that they don't know you, and that it's not being done. You assume the work has been done. And so you see, you know, can you go to their table? You know, what can you do? You know, can you go meet them on their terms? Um, because what you happen sometimes is I've seen is you know, some of these people have been doing this work a lot longer than you have, than whatever, and just because you didn't know or they're not in your circle, and it's kind of insulting when they say, hey, we're doing this, and like, yeah, we've been doing that. You know, we've been here since, you know, whenever. Um, oh, this was a good one. Understanding that um, Every, different people have different priorities, and sometimes the priority is simply based on what you can do. And so it can be a priority, but they might not be out of it. So we kind of talked about, you know, if you, live on the, if you live on the side of the street and your garage on fire, but on the other side of the street there's eight houses on fire, and they can't put out the right eight houses, um, it doesn't mean that I don't care about my garage. It doesn't mean, you know, they just can't get to that. You know, there's, you know so the sense of urgency, and so to and realize that, you know, sometimes they just can't take any on anything else. Understanding perspective requires, oh yeah, that's kind of what it's, um, basically what I just said basically. Um, that if there's no table, and sometimes, um, so two things, so sometimes with tables, um, like is at your table, but there's also one, you know, if there's no table, how can you create one? And also when is it time to dismantle the table and to start a new table? So um, at some point, you know, when you invite people to join you, to join a, something, a you know, program already in, in progress, there'll always be that person who came in. So at what point, like, we're gonna start over, we're gonna start a new thing, with a new umbrella, a new name, um, or we're gonna, we're gonna cope, we're gonna bring in another group, and make sure that those people are represented on all different levels. So people actually talk, we talked a lot about, is when you walk into an organization and you might have on the first level, um, you know, let's say, people of color, you know, but the higher it gets, the wider it gets. Well, people notice that, and so, you know, these communities who have been marginalized traditionally are very aware of what it looks like to be window dressing for other communities, basically. So what does it look like, you know, to bring us in at the last minute? Um, yeah, also, when we talk about the whole collaboration, is if you, sometimes we're, so when you work in nonprofits or government, you know, everybody has different access to budgets and stuff. And sometimes you might have things that other people need that you don't even know that you, that are beneficial. So for instance, if you work for the city, let's say, um, you have access to, re to reserve rooms. And so, or you work at parks. So you can like, hey, we work at parks and we want to do something with this nonprofit who would normally have to go fill out a form, pay money, pay dep by, by a deposit, all that stuff to just rent, like say the Cal Anderson Pavilion or whatever shelter. You can partner with them and do that through your office. And so that's the way to work with other groups and organizations um, 
before the table. So we, what, what we kind of decided was, even before this whole let's get to the table and you know, come together and be buddies and stuff, it's like, what have we done prior to that? And I guess that there is one more that I wanted to... No, I guess that's it. All right. All right, cool. Thank you. Right.